everyone. Welcome back. Welcome to the Reconstructing History Podcast. I'm Bob. I'm Cass. And it's a beautiful November day. Oh, it's gorgeous. Here in the Netherlands. It's eight degrees and proper temperature. Proper temperature. <laughs> <laughs> which what. is which is like well let me do some quick quick math. Um Multiply by two, add 40 or something? Uh, it's like, I think it's like 40. No, 45. It's, it's... Chilly. It's, That's it but is. it's not close to freezing. No. No. It's, everything's kind of tinged with dew. It was frozen this morning, though, when I was... Yeah, there. yeah. Well, it's November. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really get cold here, but it doesn't, it's not... Yeah, it never, it's never not, really that hard of a frost. It's not St. Croix. That's no, it is definitely not. <laughs> it's But the sun is shining and glittering through the dew. and The trees and are all gold and orange and red. And yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it's, it's not like November, like in Pennsylvania, November. I mean, I'm not wearing a coat. I'm wearing a pashmina wrapped around my shoulders. And, you know, I'm not dead from being frozen to death. <laughs> So, so that's where yeah. we are. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't really. I mean, it doesn't get properly cold here. Uh, I keep saying it's, uh, we don't really have winter. You know, I mean, Dutch uh, people would argue with me that that is winter, but that's not. It's it not. It gets pretty bleeding cold here. It's but not. Still. You don't get. I mean, they don't even have snow plows. They go, <laughs> oh, oh, it's snowed. Oh, let's go take some pretty pictures in the snow. And by the time you come back in, it's melted. It's, it's not snow. So that's today. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> That's today. Freaking damn Dutch don't know how to have freaking winter. I'm I'm really really happy with the winter here. Thank you very much, Dutch government. <laughs> yeah, like the, like they're responsible. They're for responsible. It. Thank don't you, you, Prime Minister Mark Rutte. Yeah, Rutte. He controls the weather. He can't even make people wear masks. But he, he controls, controls the, the weather. weather. Oh, they can make people wear masks now. They changed. As they of changed December law. first. Yes, they changed the law. Not that yeah. people people around here are no, people are universally wearing. doing mm. it. Like, People are wearing masks. Yeah, it's it, yeah. It, voluntarily. Yeah, but, but you know what? This whole big thing in 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 the United States, you can't make me, you can't make me do that. Well, in the Netherlands, the Constitution said you cannot compel a person in the Netherlands to wear a specific garment of clothing. And what what this is meant to do is to prohibit there being any kind of requirement, like back in. World War II, when the Nazis were in charge of Germany, they would make Jews wear a, a, a Mok and David, star, the yeah. gold star on their clothing to mark themselves as Jews. So when the Netherlands wrote their modern constitution, they said, we don't, we don't, we want it to be against the law to ever compel someone to wear some item of clothing. And then when they wanted to make uh, legislation to say you must wear masks in indoor public spaces. They couldn't do it because it was against the Constitution. So they had changed the entire law. Um, and, and for a while there, they said it is strongly suggested. And the reality is that they said it's strongly suggested and everyone went, oh, okay, and wore a mask. Yep. Because the worst At least thing... That, around here. Yeah, I the mean. worst thing that can happen to you is that somebody gives you a dirty look. If a Dutch person gives you a dirty well, look... Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I forgot mine. Yep. One day last week mm -hmm. when I went to the grocery store. Yep. And there were at least two little old ladies. Yep. If looks could kill, I would have left in a bag. Yep. Yep. So, you know, you don't have to change the law if the omas of the world... Oh, my heavens. If the omas of the world are going to give you a dirty look, you will step into line. But, so. but then again, back when the back when the pandemic first happened... Mm -hmm. I know I told you about this, sweetie. Mm -hmm. Uh... There was a little bit of hoarding happening when lockdown first went into effect. And here in the Netherlands, they call it hamstering. I love that, hamstering. It's actually a verb, hamster. Yeah. To, to hamster, it means to hoard. To, to hoard things to unnecessarily. Stick it, to yeah. stick it in your cheeks yeah, until yeah. your cheeks pop. Yeah. And it, we had, there was a few days of it where you couldn't get paper towels or toilet paper for all the money in the world. And all the almost had it. No, the, I, I watched a man put two great big uh, economy packs of toilet paper <laughs> in his cart and this little old lady just went up one side and down the other and the, the Brabant's dialect of Dutch is some as spoken by the elderly is hard for me to follow <laughs> but I caught but you, got, you couple, understood what she said I caught a couple of very bad things that I don't I, I'm, I'm shocked that such a sweet 
silver haired little old lady would know these words and the word hamster. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah I'm Neat like, it. and it was just. Uh, it, I mean, the reality is, you didn't have. They didn't have to change the Dutch constitution to compel everybody to wear masks. They just have to put like strate strategically placed omas yes. in every oma being the word for grandmother, by the way. Um, omas in every every street corner, so they'll just look at you. To and be you'll, to be honest, there yeah. are some places here where there are people who are kvetching about masks. Yeah, well, here in where we live yeah no worse no no place is perfect it's been weeks yeah. since i've seen i saw someone just get out of their car go into the shops and you know la di da without a mask on mm -hmm. right. i've seen some people like myself included yeah. you know, sheepishly go into the grocery store you know with looks of sorrow and please forgive me yeah. on their faces because they might they must have forgotten well yeah there's there's a real spirit there were some protests yeah but bit. there's a real spirit of we're all in this together yeah. kind of thing and and that's that's it's really nice to live in a place where where that's your, true yeah. your neighbors are looking out for you and and stuff like yep. that so you know and 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 judging you yes. judging you but then you know and shouting at you judging you and <laughs> shouting at you but God forbid anybody else shout at you because they will then shout at them. Yes. So it's it's nice. I mean, I really like it here. Because one person's oma is everybody's oma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the story from the Netherlands. Van Morgen. Yeah, I have I have a bitch. I have a bit Do of a you? bitch. Yeah, I have oh, yeah. I have a complaint. Yeah. Okay. Go complaint ahead. Complaint department. All right. I think I know what this is about. Do you? Yeah. All right. You probably do. I um, I got an email from a customer the other day, and I get an email of this type maybe once a year, I think, maybe once every couple of years, but not, not maybe once a year, I'd say, that someone gets one of our, our patterns, and they take it out of the packaging, and they find something they don't like, and they write me an email, which is fine. But the thing that they don't like is they have measured the pattern and the front is longer than the back or the side seam on the front is longer than the side seam in the back or the shoulder seam is longer in the back than in the front or whatever. And they've got out their little measuring tape and they measure it. And normally they send me a photograph, photographic evidence, friends, of them measuring this. The, two pieces of the pattern laying on a table with a ruler on top of them showing indeed that these two things are a different size and the question is always did you screw up or did it print wrong is this a mistake is this an error and I'm here to tell you it is not an error and I want to explain to you why and I'm not angry because the person asked the question I get angry later <laughs> I get angry after I've explained the reason. Okay, now, patterns are made out of paper. Humans are not. Neither is the material you make the clothes from. Yeah, yeah, let me, let me say that a little, I'm, I'm being overly simplistic. A pattern is a flat, two-dimensional, unstretchy thing and a human being is a three-dimensional thing with curves and bulges and squishiness squishiness and stuff now number one when you you don't put the paper on a person you know sew the paper together and put it on a person so so number one we're we're dealing with the fact that the paper doesn't act like the fabric and if you've listened to my podcasts and videos and rants and stuff like this I've said it a million times if I said it once that I don't even believe you should do a muslin of an out a piece of clothing that you're making don't do a muslin and then expect the muslin to be perfect because unless you're making the final product out of the same fabric that you made the muslin out of you're you're gonna get a different answer and I mean I I learned this the hard way by I I was making a coterie way back in the day 
when I used to actually draft a pattern to make a code RD, which I don't anymore, and we can talk about that later. Um, but I made a muslin and fitted this code RD on myself, and it absolutely fit perfectly, and then I went and cut my code RD out of wool, and I had to cut six inches off the circumference, because, <laughs> yeah, yeah, muslin doesn't stretch like wool stretches and you know the thing warmed up to my body it was just it was huge and I thought oh my god what did I do wrong how, how, how badly did I screw this up and no I didn't screw it up the muslin fit perfectly but muslin acts differently than fabric now I'm not saying that the pattern piece acts different from well the pattern piece does act differently from your fabric it's a piece of paper but um what the pattern piece is trying to do is, I mean, patterns aren't precise. They get you in the ballpark and then you have to do some of the work yourself. But what patterns try to do is what someone would do if they were draping the clothing on your body. And if you, if you study tailoring, modern suit tailoring, yeah. And you learn how to draft a man's suit, a, a person's suit jacket. Yeah. One of the things that you learn almost immediately is that the shoulder seam on the back piece is longer than the shoulder seam on the front piece by like half an inch to three quarters of an inch to a full inch. Yeah. Depending on the size of the person. And if you took my pattern for a suit jacket and measured it, you would say, well, these two things don't match. The back is much bigger than the front. You screwed up. No, I did not. What you're supposed to do is ease the back into the front, which easing means, you know, you, you, you take up your sewing stitches so that the bigger piece meets the same size as the smaller piece. And you think, oh, well, that, that's, why don't you just cut it the same? If it was the same, it would match. Well, the reason you do that is because every human being is curved a little bit more on their shoulder in the back than they are in the front. And if you look at, if you looked at a very, very skinny person, a person that doesn't have much musculature in their shoulders, you'll actually see they're a little dished in the front of their shoulder and a little, you know, convex in the back of their shoulder. And in order to accommodate this, you cut a pattern with a bigger back shoulder seam than a front shoulder seam. So when you sew that together, the fabric kind of dishes in the same way as your body does. And this, this, this has to happen, right? You can't, because yeah. it, it, if you, if you uh, make the lengths the same, the resulting garment won't look right. Is, no, it will, that's it, correct? It, it, it will look okay but you'll have funny wrinkles that then you'll go, oh, I have to pull something and stretch something to get rid of those wrinkles, rip out the seam and do it again. And, and you'll end up, at the, you'll end up doing what you'll end up making the front. Yes. Be, yeah. yeah. You'll end up yeah. making that. Oh, okay. It, basically, yeah. basically what you're doing when you're drafting the pattern is, is, is guessing what you're going to have to do. I mean, because, okay. It's often been said that patterns are like a blueprint and indeed they are we use the same computer program to draft a blueprint to build a building as you do to make a pattern. We use AutoCAD. It's the exact same stuff. You put in the measurements and it generates a shape and then you change that shape based on, you know, yeah. what size you want it to be and everything. And you have to have good measurements. You also have to take into consideration your materials. Yeah. Um, you have to take into consideration how your materials change. For example, if you're building a road surface, you have to take into consideration that in the winter, it's going the the material of your road is going to act differently than in the summertime when yeah, it's warm. Right. Um, and the same thing with the human body. You have to say, okay, this fabric, like linen, is is notorious for. You think linen is going to be nice and stable, but you put it on a body and it stretches because as it warms up, it. it gets loose. Yeah, wool wool does a twill, wool does the same thing. Yeah, wool wool does yeah. wool does a similar thing, but linen, you know, when you feel linen in your hands, you say, Oh, this is really stable. I mean wool always feels a little stretchy. Yeah. But linen doesn't feel stretchy at all until you put it on and you wear it for about five minutes and then all of a sudden it's baggy because and wrinkled, don't forget wrinkled. And wrinkled because it's linen. Beautiful <laughs> but freaking wrinkled all the time. So so what what you're saying is that what goes into 
pattern design. I'm, I'm trying to... <laughs> he's, he's trying to interpret what I'm saying yeah. to the public. Well, what goes into pattern? It, it's, it's engineering. It is engineering. It, it's textile engineering. Mm -hmm. And just like, you know, there are things that uh, engineers f that build roads and bridges and buildings know yeah. to do that makes their bridges and buildings stay up. Yeah. There are things that go into a pattern that a pattern maker or text or textile engineer indeed mm -hmm. knows to make happen so that the resulting garment is as good as it can possibly be. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm taking away from this is unless you're prepared to question uh, the, the engineer for the Department of Transportation who's building that bridge mm -hmm. or who, who made up the designs for the bridge that's being built, why are you... It takes it takes a lot of stones to say, well, that can't possibly be right. Well, and let me just say something. Uh, and, and, let me let me interject something here because it just occurred to me, and I'm talking to you, Jason Smith. Um, <laughs> Jason is my friend who who is he's worked with a lot of engineers, and his he has the opinion. Um, I'm not going to put words in his mouth, but he's worked with a lot of engineers, so he has this experience with them. And the the problem with engineering is it's you learn it in a book. And you you make these architectural drawings, and everything, all the numbers match, and and the math is right, and all that, and therefore it should be correct. But then when you start to build the building, you go, oh shit, that doesn't work, and that yeah. doesn't work, and that yeah. doesn't work. Now that doesn't mean that the engineering was incorrect. That doesn't mean that the math was wrong. That doesn't mean that the engineer is an idiot and made a mistake. That means that the real world is different than a lab. The real world is different than a drawing board. And um, like, imagine this, I, I build, say, let's take the metaphor of a building. I, I make a blueprint for this building and I take into consideration the materials that are going to build this building and I make the adjustments and I do all that and then my building has to walk which is exactly what clothing has to do. You build your building, taking into consideration the materials and all that kind of stuff, and then your building is a hum living, breathing human being, and it has to take a step, and then all bets are off. Um, so then you get into you know experience. Yes, yeah. it, my my point exactly. The thing is that when you buy a pattern, it gives you it gives you the experience of the pattern maker. And possibly the experience of all the people who came before the pattern maker and taught her her craft. But in reality, you have to you have to adjust at the end. And now let me interject something else. Oh, well, let me let me I'll, I'll finish on this this the, the experience thing. I know a person who wanted to make me a vest. And I was thrilled. She wants to make me a vest. Okay, terrific. Make me a vest. And she. Um, I said, I'll even, I'll give you the pattern, the drafted pattern adjusted to my size. And I gave her a muslin that was, that was drafted to my size so that she could start, you know, close to the end. So she could do yeah, this project yeah. and I want her to be successful. So I was just like, I'll do all that work and then I'll hand it to you and you could do the sewing. And so she put it on me and said, oh, I don't like how that seam is. I'm going to mark it and pin it here and then we'll, we'll fix that. And so I came back for the second fitting and she put a different muslin on me and the seam was crazier, like really weird now. Hmm. And she's like, why is that? I redrafted the pattern. And then we talked about it and she was in design school and she said, but I, I went back to my books and I drafted the pattern all over again to get rid of that problem. And we looked at it and I said, no, go back to the original and go to the original and solve the problem from the original. And so, Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. This. And yeah. then, and then, you know, this went on and on. And then I said, okay, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident in your abilities. Let's go. I mean, she was a student and I was trying to, to help her have a good experience. And we went, she, she went and cut the good material and sewed it together and was doing the final fitting. And the seam was totally out of whack. 
the seam that was a little strange in the beginning was now 16 degrees stranger, you know? Yeah. And she, what what happened? What happened? What happened? And I pulled out the old muslin and laid it down over the pattern. And she had she said, "Well, I redrafted the pattern because your pattern was wrong." And according and according to her books, according to her books, according to the theory, this is how you should do the thing. But she had she was a student. She had never done an apprenticeship. And I went, I told the story to my tailor and my tailor just kind of went <laughs> and laughed a little bit because my tailor has, she's always got two apprentices going all the time. There are two apprentices in the back room sewing stuff. Two young girls just graduated from design school and because it's a big design college in oh, Eindhoven. Eindhoven yeah. yeah. And uh, so she's always got two of them back there. And she says, oh my God, they all come to me. They all come to me telling me about their books. They're they all come to me telling me how they took this class and they got A's and then I have to break them because the reality is book learning's all fine and good but in the real world things work differently yeah. you must you must study the books and understand how that goes that's how you that's how you learn the fundamentals that's how you learn the fundamentals of everything yeah. when you learn how to speak french you study grammar from a book but then when you go to paris yeah. it's not a book right. it's reality yeah, yeah. and and it is that way with with patterns so basically you know living breathing human beings are messy yeah. And they're not the same left and right. And and you're using, you know, a, a handful of measurements to represent a body that has a million different measurements. And and you you have to build that up with experience. And as, as pattern makers, the only thing we can do is add a little bit here and take a little bit away there based on our experience so that you don't have to have 20 years of experience drafting patterns in order to get to the same place. Um, and then there's another, there's another issue because you'll say, oh, well, this isn't, this isn't that you screwed up because the front, the front of my frock coat is, you know, four centimeters longer than the back of my frock coat. How is that supposed to be? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, in historical tailoring, and this is what a lot of pattern companies that make costumes don't do. Oh, yeah, yeah. In the 18th century, the shoulder seam was never on your shoulder. No, it was like across your scapula. It, yeah, yeah, way in the back. It's yeah, rotated yeah. all the way to the back. So, so if you're measuring a coat front and a coat back from the 18th century, you know, pirate coat yeah, or yeah. colonial coat or whatever, they shouldn't be the same length because if they were the same length, then the back of your coat would be too short. Well, I've, heard, I've heard it, and I, I think this is this is one of those, an, an example of the, this important thing that I know I forget all the time, is that modern tailoring is an entirely different animal than historical tailor. Yeah, yes and no. Um, I'll tell you what is a totally different animal. Dressmaking and tailoring. Oh yeah, yeah. We think they're the same thing because they both sew. They both involve sewing. Mm, yeah. But gardening and farming. Farming. No, no, gardening and house construction both dig in the dirt, but they're not the same thing at all. Oh yeah, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, kind of. I yeah, think. I don't know. It's not yeah. a, it's not the greatest I think, example. I think gardening and but it's not, well, not gardening that, and farming, it's just the same thing. Not that one is any more or less simple than the other. No, I but think. but the reality is that when you when you make a dress, you know, the seam is on the shoulder and the seam is down the side and ta-da, you know, that's everything's a block and you start with you start with a body block and I'm 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 doing a video on this sometime soon, so stay tuned. Watch our YouTube channel, there'll be a video. Um okay. But you know, when when you go and you learn how to sew, you learn how to do a body block, and you take your measurements or you take your friend's measurements, and you all make a different body block, and you say, okay, if this body block, and from this body, this body block fits me perfectly. From this body block, I can make a blouse pattern or a skirt pattern or a, a jacket pattern or whatever, because these are my measurements. But um, if you go a little further, you learn things about design, which means you don't have to have the seam on your shoulder. You don't have to have the seam straight down your side. You can move the seam, 
but when you move the seam you have to make adjustments elsewhere so that everything works because that's that's a choice right and in tailoring tailoring doesn't conform to the body as much as tailoring makes the body look the way it wants so that's why you have a suit jacket has shoulder pads in it it has interfacing in the front it has it has all these different things you know tailoring fixes figure flaws by hiding them all oh, those those uh, pe- boning boned panels in mm-hmm. elizabethan men's doublets bone panels or padding to give them that padding kind of to give peace god, peace belly. god belly because yeah. it was it was fashionable to look like you had a belly um in 18th century coats it's often padded across the chest yeah. because you want to look a little pigeon breasted yeah um you know these are things you built wasp, it. yeah the wasp waist yeah and, uh, you build it into the coat. Bo Brummel's period. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you build things into the coat, and and those things. Male corsetry. Male corsetry. Um, you know, I mean, look at even modern the uh, British, um, the scarlet, the British uh, dress uniform jackets. Oh, yeah, you yeah. know, the scarlet. Um, they they'll stand up on their own. Yeah. You can't you can't fold them. <laughs> no. They won't fold. Um, and if you put them on, it's like wearing a corset because it's that, you know, it's, it's, it's not a big roomy jacket, you know, um, that's not for, that's, you're not wearing that in combat. You know? no. <laughs> you're wearing that for the pictures or yeah. sitting very nicely on your horse and very tall. You can't bend at the waist, you know? <laughs> um, I don't know about that. Well, but... yeah, you can't bend at the waist easily, let's say. Um, it's, uh... but it's constructed to look a certain way right. and, and that doesn't make it comfortable or, you know, even yeah. functional sometimes. But yeah, and um, I was I was thinking it's about the, the, I think the point is it's 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 two entirely different skill sets. Well yeah, and, and the thing is you And so if you know how to make a if you know how to make a, 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 a tailored a tailored twentieth century men's coat, mm-hmm. you might not know how to make uh, you certainly probably don't know how to make an 18th century woman's gown. Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. It's they're very different things, and we we beat ourselves up because oh, sewing is sewing. Well, sewing. Uh, no, it's not. Sewing is sewing is a, a process. Sewing isn't the profession. Isn't sewing. You know, the profession is tailoring or dressmaking or what yeah. have you. Um, there's specialization. Just there's like a lot of field. specialization. Yeah, I remember a woman asked me a question. She said she um, she was a, a person in the SCA, and her husband was a fighter. And she said he keeps rib- ripping the sleeves out of his tunics. What do I do? I keep making his sleeves bigger and bigger, but he keeps ripping his sleeves out of his tunics. What do I do? And I said make his sleeves tight. Yeah. And she thought I was nuts. But the answer to you keep ripping the sleeves out of your out of your tunic is make the sleeve and the body of the tunic super tight and put the seam exactly where his arm joins his body and then his clothing will move like his body and there won't be any stress on it. Do you, oh gee, like wait, uh, blah, 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 blah. how I used to blow up my 15th, my 1470s joined hose. Yep. All the time yep. because I'd wear them for an hour. Yep. It would start to stretch up and I wouldn't yep. adjust my points. Yep. And, and you had, you had, bro- you had because you had baggy ass, because you let them hang let, down yeah. like your jeans do. Now my balls are just that powerful. Your balls are huge, made of <laughs> razor blades. <laughs> razor balls. Hi, Jess. <laughs> Say hi to Tig for us. Tig, Tig Razor Balls Montague. <laughs> <laughs> he knows who he is. Yeah, well, you're then, famous. Now everyone else does. You're too. famous, Tig. <laughs> Tig, you're, you and your balls are famous, you're buddy. Internationally famous. You can thank me later. I'll dance. Thank him. Yeah, I'll, thank you. That's what he's going to do. I'll dance at your wedding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He'll dance on your grave. He'll dance on my grave. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, well. No, but seriously, I mean, that's that's the reason, you know, this is the reason that um, a lot of men who get into medieval reenactment don't like their hose being fitted so tightly into their crotch because they're, they don't wear they don't wear their pants that high and that tight. Yeah. And but if you don't with hose, you're just going to tear them to pieces. They yep. have to be close to your body. In a day. And yeah. And it's 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 uncomfortable to a modern person who's never worn them, but if you wear them properly, yep. then everything works. And um and 
and you can I mean I've seen many seamstresses make themselves crazy trying to make um, a pair of hose that in many cases their husband wants to wear but he doesn't want to be he, he doesn't want to learn how to wear period hose right. so he wants them to fit him normally and yet look right so they they break everything they bend everything all out of shape in order to accommodate him putting crotch gussets in and all this kind of nuts stuff and the reality is dude if you want to dress like a medieval person dress like a medieval person because i'll tell you what medieval people knew how to dress like medieval people it's odd how that works it's odd how it works so so you know basically the long and the short of what i'm trying to say to you is that um i make mistakes like everyone else but when I've drafted a pattern that is longer in one seam than another, it's often because there is a good tailoring reason for doing so. And those two seams should meet up through ease. And they, they do it for a reason. They do it for the reason being to shape the garment properly. I think it's also worth noting that, and this this is a practical thing, that if I get something like a pattern or whatever, and I think there's a discrepancy mm-hmm. or there's an error in it, I'm going to look at the I'm going to look at when it was published, and I'm going to ask myself which is more likely that this tool is made improperly and no one has ever No one has noticed for 14 years? No one has noticed it for 14 years or whatever the time is. Hell, it could be last year for all I care. Uh No one has noticed it, that it just went to press with this massive gaping error in it. First thing I'm going to do is go contact the manufacturer and look for errata. I mean, I'm I'm a game writer these days primarily so I'm, I'm going to go to the, the company's website and look for a rule an errata sheet that oh yeah there's this error in the in this page of the rule book because that you know there might be then I'll contact the company if I don't find that and I'll see but usually uh, it's it there, there's there's a reason why it's like that mm-hmm. it's not like the product hasn't been tested mm-hmm. And, and the reality is, you know, and once you buy it, it's your pattern, folks. Do whatever you want with it. Oh, and sure. if, you, if you don't like that the, the front is longer than the back, then cut it off. You know, I mean, you're not going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> um, well, here we're on the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Yeah, ta-dunk, ta-dunk, ta-dunk. Um, the only bad road in the Netherlands. It's right by our house. Um, yeah, I mean... You know, there's a reason that I put that extra in there. If you don't want to do all the shaping that's required of the historical way of construction, you don't have to do it. No one's holding a gun to your head. Um, I would entreat you to make up the garment as it's drafted first because you might find out if you cut it off because you measured it before you made up the garment that then when you make up the garment, suddenly the front is too short because you thought it was too long and you cut it and now it's too short. Or yeah, or the shoulder seam that you had to fix yeah. is in a, and that, that's an important, that's an important thing I wanna, I think I, I it, it's occurred to me before about this, mm-hmm. is that the more you fix, and I'm putting fix in great big air quotes mm-hmm. there, yeah. something like this, it, there's a, there is a humongous probability, not possibility, but probability, that you're going to cause other things that you need to fix. Mm-hmm. Now, that, you take that on yourself. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm saying. If, yeah. if, if you're okay doing that, if you're okay going through multiple iterations to fix the thing that went wrong because of the thing you fixed, mm-hmm. and then having to do that over and over and over again as other things get screwed up mm-hmm. the more you fix that's you know that's fine no and, and it's it's, it's I, true i wouldn't do that myself yeah. i would i would start i would use the original 
it's and, it's true know. that I'm I'm also drafting for an average, and the, the definition of average is that no one is the av- no <laughs> one no one looks like the average. Yeah, it's right. absolutely true that no one is the average. Um, so, for example, using the shoulder seam as an example, <laughs> the reason why it's an inch bigger in the back than in the front is because you you curve in the back. Well, if you're a person with a, an overly erect posture. There are people with an overly erect posture, so so their shoulders are naturally further back than the average person's shoulders. So they don't have that rounding bit in their shoulder. Well, they don't need, maybe they only need a quarter of an inch yeah. difference rather than a full inch difference yeah. front and back. So That's why you said earlier it's a guideline, right? Yeah, it's a guideline. So, or, or you know, the thing with the, well, the, the, the shoulder seam being rotated to the back on 18th century garments, it is indeed rotated to the back. But if you are, if you have a belly, you need more than yeah. four centimeters because your front is bigger. Yeah. Or if you're very, fl- if you're very flat, you have, you know, a shallow chest and, and no belly, you need less. Yeah. So, it, you know, a pattern, you say, oh, well, I'm this size in, I'm this size. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, my chest size 40 or something. Um, chest size 40 doesn't tell me anything about what your shoulders look like or your belly or yeah. you know anything. It just tells me the circumference of your chest. So so you may you need to adjust it for yourself. But you know, give me the benefit of the doubt that I did it for a reason or cut it the way you want to cut it and just don't blame me if it goes off the rails. I I, I tell you a story. My friend Britt Hi, Britt. <laughs> um, <laughs> Britt bought a pattern from me long, long ago. Oh, yeah. One, one of the, the first patterns she ever bought from me. One of the Lens Connect patterns. Yeah, it was the, the, the Campfrau. Yeah, yeah. Camp followers gown. Campfrau gown. And she bought this pattern from me. And she had been making... She'd been part of a Lens Connect group for years. And she'd been making her own camp followers gowns. And she bought my pattern and decided... Fiend that she is. She's a fiend. <laughs> You're a fiend, Brit. Um, a fiend that she is, she decided she was going to try, you know, see what I had to say about camp followers count. So she reads the pattern through before she starts doing anything with it. Like you always should. Always read through the instructions before you cut anything. And she reads through it and she's going, Bah, that'll never work. Bah, that'll never. Oh, that's stupid. Oh, why would I do that? Oh, that's dumb. Ah, that'll never work. And then she decided in her fiendish little brain, Britt Meisler, I'm talking to you, that she was going to make up the pattern. said her name out loud. Oh, my God. I said her name out loud. What if I said Teague Montague? I have to say Britt Meisler, don't I? Well, at least you pronounced Britt Meisler. I did pronounce. (laughs) I didn't pronounce Teague Montague right? No, because it's Teague. Oh, Teague. Fuck off. All right, all right. Just, you know. Um, <laughs> he's a rugby player. Don't forget. He's a brute. I can take him. Yeah, out to dinner. <laughs> yeah, out to dinner. <laughs> anyway. Britt Meitzler. Britt, Me- Britt Meitzler, talking to you. She says, I'm going to follow the instructions to the letter and make up this outfit exactly how this pattern says to do it. And then I'm going to go to Cass's house and I'm going to knock on her door and I'm going to be wearing the outfit and show her how wrong it is. And so she did that. But She, she, yeah. she followed every instruction yeah. to the letter. She did exactly what I told her to do. She ignored all of her instincts and all of her training and did exactly how I told her to do. And then she knocked on my door. And I opened the door, and she's standing there in a beautiful camp follower's dress, and said, Damn it, you're right! As I recall, the exact quote was, You bitch! You bitch! <laughs> Damn you it, bitch. you're right! I said, I said, You're welcome, darling. And there was no context to this. You're, you're welcome. Like, no. oh, but, but, what? Well, I mean, welcome. Yeah. Would you like to have a, have a cup of tea? The Brit, Brit calling me a bitch without context is... Common. Normal. Yeah, yeah, normal. Yeah, it's, it's her pet name for me. Bitch. Um, yeah, so, you know, I'm... Oh, oh I, I, just, I, I just thought yeah. of another thing mm-hmm. that shows... It's a story that proves that 
Tash McGann of Reconstructing History is not infallible. Oh, I'm not infallible. When it comes to pattern drafting. I'm design. totally not infallible. Many moons ago, back when we had to make our own paper for the patterns by felling trees, chewing them up with our mandibles, and spitting the resulting paste onto... We did that? Back in the beginning. Back, back in the days of yore. Back in the days of yore. I've lost those prints. We hand printed all of the patterns using lead type. Lead. No, um, yeah. honest to God, back I in the, don't know what he's talking about, folks. The very first, the 100 series. Yeah. You drafted, because you said nobody's, nobody is average. Right. You drafted, I think it was 105. Mm -hmm. Based on, you drafted the pattern based on a doublet you made for me. Yes. And we got complaints because the collar wasn't fitting anyone right because the neck opening was so large. Because <laughs> you have a neck as big as your head. <laughs> I, I have a Cardassian neck, right? Oh, so true. One, one of the valuable lessons yep. you learned early on in your textile engineering career is that your yeah. husband is not, even though I'm a 42 inch chest, mm -hmm. 36 inch waist, you know, I'm, I am medium by yeah. every metric. But it's a 17 inch neck. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, ridiculous. A 17 inch neck that spreads out into my shoulders yeah. like a rugby player. Yeah. So, yeah, that. Yeah, and, and then. The, mm -hmm. the point is, we fixed it. You look at yeah. 105 today, and it won't do that anymore. Yeah. I say we. Yeah, you fixed I it. I fixed it. But with your help, darling. Um, yeah, and that's why we, we, we draft patterns like, you know, I don't honestly draft patterns. It may seem like my base size is based on my size and the male's base size is based on Bob's size, but they're not our measurements. They're the measurements that we would start out with to make something for us. Yeah which doesn't include a lot of different things. Like it takes the average man's neck size, for example, <laughs> or, you know, um, not gold, yeah. <laughs> gold yeah. Ducat's neck size. Yeah. And, or the, the Although average, it is, he is just a tailor. The average, wrong guy. No, not that's, um, what's his name? The tailor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us in the comments. Listen. Yeah. Tell us in the comments. I forget his name. Oh my God. Garrick. Garrick. Garrick the tailor. Just a tailor. My favorite um, character on that show. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, like, I mean, I have I have very sloped shoulders. I can't draft a bodice pattern that fits my shoulders and sell it to anyone else because it will not fit. Oh, you know, yeah. My, I mean, my shoulders, I mean, I can't keep straps on my shoulders ever. You I have, have to, not without a staple gun. No, I need a staple gun. Um, it's true. It, it, that's just how I'm built. So I, I don't draft. I draft my pattern with a, a normal squarish shoulder. And then I have to change it for myself because I, I know I'm the anomaly. Um, so, I mean, basically what I'm saying is I'm not perfect. There's no way I'm perfect, but I have been doing this for a long time and you have paid me for my product and you need, as Bob said, you know, look at the date. How, how many years do you think if that was a mistake, how many years do you think we could have been making that mistake? Cause we print the patterns when you order them. Yeah, it's not like they sit around for 20 years. Demand. We don't yeah. buy a thousand of them at a time. Yeah. I mean, we haven't, we haven't bought stock in, uh, for, of patterns since like 2005, 2005 is the last time we printed a run of patterns. Yeah. Now we print them on demand. Exactly. That's when we bought our first big plotter. Yeah. yeah. But my point is that I'm not perfect, but I, I, I do have a certain amount of expertise in this and I, I'm asking you to give me the benefit of the doubt. And if you don't want to give me the benefit of the doubt, cut it any way you want. It's, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I may have made a mistake or the way I've drafted the pattern may just be wildly incompatible with your body type. That's yeah. But please don't write me a letter and say, this pattern sucks because I measured it and, and the front and the back don't measure the same. They, if they measured the same, I'd be, if they, if they did measure the same, that would be wrong. Yeah. That would be the thing that's wrong. Okay. That's, yeah, that's it. So, you know, I'm not angry. I'm not angry. No, There's no point in being angry. But, you know, let, uh, let me do the thing, you know, don't. Don't tell your doctor how to treat you. 
<laughs> I know. Like that's, that's it's, I know it was the advent of the internet. I know, but you know, it, it WebMD sets, very clearly says I have lupus. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there's a certain point where you have to you have to trust in someone's expertise. I mean, and by all means, write me an email and say, "Hey, Cass, I got this pattern, and the front doesn't seem to match the back. Is there a reason for that?" And I will gladly tell you the reason. Oh yeah, yeah. Be prepared. I hope you like essays. I listeners. will. I will include graphics. Jesus, just don't call, or you'll be on the phone for three hours. <laughs> That's true. So I will. I will give you a lesson in pattern drafting. How, how how far are we into this podcast? Like oh god, a half an hour. Oh, two days. I've been do, I've been talking for two days. And yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, this is what you'll yeah, get. Yeah, yeah. The reality. The reality is that for we're back in the turnpike. Yeah, for for the the patterns, the f- patterns that these changes are usually really apparent and aren't aren't the 20th century patterns they're the earlier patterns yeah. and that was when people used to draft clothing on a person not on a table so i mean you would have like your your 18th century tailor would have a marker that he'd pull off the wall and, and use the general outline to draw the coat front but ultimately the coat front was based on the shape of the person who was standing in front of him not on, you know, measurements on a, a grid. Yeah. And uh, trying to draft something. I mean, there's there's been thousands of books written on um, the, this technique of training, this this technique of pattern drafting. I mean, you you there are some that are in reprint. That are some you can get from your local library. On this. Hold that thought. You know Thornton's Thornton's technique. They were, they were all they patented all their techniques of how to take these measurements and how to draft things based on these measurements. Thornton and, threads and a thimble. Yeah, um, and they're all. You write that book. Yeah, maybe. Like the Doctor Seuss Taylor book. Doctor Seuss Taylor book. Thornton threads a no. You can't thread yeah. a thimble. Shut up. Bob. You know, yeah, I don't know what you're saying. Um, Try but, to be clever and failing. Yes, failing miserably, but the. Uh, yeah, so all of these books that purport to have a system for draft, a system for tailoring, this system of tailoring, um, they're all wrong. Because nothing can be perfect for everyone. Yeah. They all are wrong in some way. Because they all make assumptions. And you have to make assumptions because there are as many different body types as there are human beings walking on the planet. That's true. And so... You know, so really, you know, leave it to me. I've done all the heavy lifting. If you have a question, if you don't understand why and you feel the need to understand why, ask me. I'm more than happy to explain it to you. But please don't write me a nasty email saying, you know, you're, you suck because the front and the back of this pattern don't match. And I'm a very, very experienced seamstress and no better than you. You might know better than me about a lot of things, but not about this one. So, yeah, I don't want to end it on a sad note or a down note or anything. Yeah. So tell a joke. I don't know any jokes. <laughs> no any jokes? Yeah. Uh... I may not be perfect, but I'm perfect for you. I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Is it funny? Yeah. Yeah, I'm laughing. I mean... There is a very big truck coming towards us on a very, 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 very very tiny road and a very, very big truck taking up the entire road and a ditch next to the road. And I am not in a four-wheel drive. I'm in a freaking Volkswagen station. Oh, we're not dead. Oh, we're not dead. Well done, Helmut. Yeah. That's my car's name, you see. Helmut. Helmut Ramirez. Helmut Ramirez. Because he's German, but he was... He's a Volkswagen, but he was made in Mexico. He's German, but he was born in Mexico. I... Just, you know, well, it's like, uh, what, what's his name? The Alberto Fujimori. Yeah. Former president of Peru. Peru, yeah. So, anyway. Racist. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it. You know, working I'm, on your racism? Yes. Polishing up your racism? No, I'm not Look, polishing. Cursed Bowman. Cursed Bowman. Cursed Bowman. Yeah. Christmas trees. Christmas trees. It's that time of year. 
fa la 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 la. La 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 la. Yeah. Look at them all too. Yep. Jesus, there's some good ones in yeah. there. Oh, did you see the story? Did I show you the story? About uh -huh. the little baby owl that was in the Rockefeller Center. <gasps> oh, yeah. Show? Yeah. And the, uh, the the people the guys who were putting it up can you can you just imagine being some oh like, poor baby some some as I don't know what union is in charge of that but it's got to be the guys who build the sets for like yeah the uh, the teamsters it's the teamsters I don't know yeah. but but the, the, oh what's this thing making the noise like that and then you know now I'm being a racist. <laughs> Can you be racist against New Yorkers? Yes, racist. We better get the animal rescue guys in here. Them goombas, take him out, put him back out in the woods. Oh, God. Anyway. It's killing me. Baby owl, safely returned to the wild. Send your letters of complaint, too. Info at reconstructinghistory.com. All right. Because that's me, and I'll just put them straight in the... No. I'll print them out and paste them to the wall of my office to shame myself. Shame. Shame. I think that's our show for today. Guys. Yeah, so that's it. I'm tired. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm tired. I I'm gonna no go idea. look at horsies. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go pet my friends. Nice. Go to Vesterhoven and find my my big fuzzy bear girls and Why don't we pet my friends. Okay. Well, as always, um, if you you got this from a podcast feed. Make sure you sign up for notifications or however the hell you do that so you always are notified when there's a new one. If you've seen it on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you can get notifications. Yeah, talk to us too. If there's something, if we pissed you off, yep. if you if you like it, say so. There's yep. comment section. Um, if I've mentioned your name and you hate me now, you can tell me about it in the comments. Oh, please do. <laughs> and... Uh, there's um you guys love me if there's something you want us want to hear us just talk say about, my name say my name easy there tiger uh, if there's something you want us to talk about you can always leave us a note in the comment section we'll talk about just about anything you know send an email to have it. you met us yeah it's true we talk about the all kinds five of hour things. long podcast. Um, but yeah, send us an email info re info at reconstructinghistory.com. Yep. If you haven't gotten our coupon, did you get our coupon? If you didn't get our coupon, it's probably because you're not on our mailing list. Oh yeah, you can sign up for that front page of our website. Front page of our website, right underneath the slideshow, there's a little thing that says join our mailing list or click here for coupons and news or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that kind of stuff. And yeah, we only send you coupons and news, so. Yeah. You know, we're not going to send you shit. Yeah. We don't send shit coupons, but it's the only place we do coupons, so sign up for the newsletter if you want to get coupons. And we're not, we don't sell our nah. content to anyone. Nah. I wouldn't even know how. No, I don't know how. No. They're mine. I'm not giving them to you. They're mine. So, so that's it. That's it, guys. Love talk, you, bye. Talk to you next time.